Well, all right, good morning. Good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my brother and sister over at YouTube, this is Pastor Dow. Top of the morning to you, as you can see, I'm definitely uh, not in Tennessee. But, however, I do have a nice video I need to actually speak to us about here this morning. Let me get past this part right here. All right, I think I'll sit down uh, right here. Uh, and then I'll get my trusty water out here this morning. Okay, so let's go with it, okay? I'm over here reclined in these little chairs right here, and let's talk about this. All right. This is mostly directed towards men in life today. And um, and this is coming from someone who has, you know, I'm uh, just a little less than, I don't know, I'm less than a month for getting ready to turn 57 years old, okay? So I'm gonna give you what I've seen in life experiences and I'm gonna tell you what I know that will make the family structure and a family home run. And I'm gonna tell you what the decay is of society and what's happening uh, to destroy the family unit. And of course, uh, yes, the majority of it is the woman, the out of control woman, the woman that has no vision, no submission, no cooperation, no agreement um, at all to support her husband's vision and dream. And so let's hit this, okay? Let me try this. I don't have any notes. So I'm going to run this down from the very beginning because I don't have anything to go on, okay, but the top of my head um, and things that, we, that need to be addressed. So here it is, hot off the press this morning. Um, my mother and father, before my father passed away, um, they were married, I believe, 60 years. 60 years. Um, Mother Carol and I, Mom Carol and I, I think we're coming up on 40 years. You think about that. Um, that's 100 years of marriage right there. And this society right here and the rebellious women that's in it, they would have alternative thoughts towards women to try to convince that my, try to convince women that my mother and Mother Carol were not successful in marriage. But I beg the difference. I'll tell you the difference. As a matter of fact, I think both of them were winning, and I think that they have won because uh, they're still married to the same man. Um, my mother is a widow now, but both of them are still married to the same man that they said I do to and had a wedding with. And I would say that that's winning. Now, how did this happen? Well, I can tell you, first of all, start off, I can tell you how it didn't happen. It didn't happen because Dad Dow was not a patriarch and was not masculine. Uh, as I remember as a boy growing up, um, and my dad had three uh, boys by my mother. And I can remember as a patriarch growing up, <clears throat> not only did I have three boys by my mother, I think I have an older sister, which I've never met. And this is paramount to what I'm gonna say. Um, my dad ruled his house. He did. Um, my mother, um, a few times throughout the stint of their marriage, um, ended up making more money than my dad did. Whenever um, she had a solid job where she worked uh, in a hospital as a nurse or a nurse or technician or something like that, a nurse nurse technician, but she worked in there for a long time and received a nice little retirement, okay? Uh, my dad, hard worker, construction. Um, I can remember him driving trucks, driving cement trucks. That's what uh, his cow would call it, cement trucks. Um, he worked just extremely hard, made a lot of money doing it, but when he didn't work, the house was sustained by the income of my mother. 
out of which it was never her money or his money. Contrary to popular belief today, uh, I believe that our fathers and mothers, uh, our grandparents, they had it right. Our grandmothers and grandfathers, I think they had it right. They knew exactly what they were doing. They knew how to keep families together. So even when that he had times of down, time of feast of famine because there wasn't any employment because, you know, it wasn't just booming in the construction industry or whatever may have you. Um, when the income came into the home, it came directly to my father's hand and he decided what to do with it. Um, that's because he ruled his house. Um, my mother, when she would get off from work, she would cook, she would clean, she would do laundry, she would wash clothes, and literally, without them even being uh, what you call God-fearing, literally, without them being God-fearing, my mother would be the literal first one up out of the bed every single morning. And she wasn't even keeping the commandments. We weren't keeping the commandments. And she would be the last to bed every evening. My mom did. Mama Dow. And I'm telling you, that's something to be envied in this generation. I'm going to talk about that too. It's something of a character and quality like that. Now, let's fast forward over to my marriage with Mother Carol. I'm definitely the patriarch. I'm definitely the one that rules the roost, and my word says, and it goes. Now, Mother Carol will work some stints uh, after we had gotten married. She will work maybe, I think, out of the 40 years that we have been married, I think she may have worked no more than maybe two or three years out of that. If that, um, I've always been the breadwinner in the family. And if I said go, we go. If I said we're going to stay, we stay. Um, there was no argument. Never been any back talk, a back, uh, a lip giving back to me. Um, never arguing with me uh, about um, the way she thinks things ought to be. It's always been whatever I said. Now you think about that for a second. Today, this society will call that well. That's a weak woman. Well, I tell you what. When we look at history, we can clearly see that any time that women have a voice, any time have a vote or rule in anything, the nation is being destroyed. And what are we looking at right now with America? Can you can anybody out there tell us that when we have all these women on TV and all these women ruling in Congress and in these different country and these uh, different states, governors, um, House of Representatives, Senate and stuff? Can anybody tell us if we're better off or worse off right now? Are we on the incline as a nation of prosperity, or are we literally on the decline? And be honest with that. All right, because I know we're following the the same sentiment as ancient Rome. I know that, um, but in my family, um, I never tolerated any back talk, any um, any any and none of that. Now I didn't have to worry about that. Now why I'm saying all this, I'm saying all this stuff because it's like my mother and mother Carol. They already knew their roles. They knew their roles, and they know how to keep a family together. Unlike today. With so many women out here that want to give the younger generation, check this out, information on relationships, information on marriages, when literally 90% of the people today that grow up in homes are dysfunctional homes, to where the father or the mother is not in the home at all. I say, you either got the father missing or the mother missing, just totally dysfunctional. Or either the woman has done ran to the divorce court to try to strip the man of everything that he got, um, and then... Uh, been bitter against the father and then try to raise the children to be bitter against the father um, and they grow up empty with a void in them not having a patriarch or or uh, a father figure in the home and why do you think there's so many men young men today uh, that are incarcerated young men that have no vision young men that have no direction today because the man some way somehow has been taken out of the home because of the false accusations uh, or either the envy, the jealousy, and the strife, and the contention that the woman constantly keeps up in a home because she is trying to command, not only command, she's trying to rule. And if she has ever gotten any type of taste of authority, I'll be damned if she is going to relinquish any of it at all. She's not going to do it. 
Um, and when a man does fight for his right and his position in the home, which he shouldn't have to, then there's always trouble, problems, and issues. You know, the book says, the Bible says, the Bible says there's no wickedness like the wickedness of a woman. And he says, man, there's a bad, 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 bad thing that goes on in the world when another woman, when one woman is jealous over another woman. And of course, I've been saying this for years and people have listened to me for years. I've read that Bible. I cannot tell you how much I've read the Bible over these last um, 30, 30 something years. And I always ask this question, who does the Bible warn about? Does it warn the woman about the man or are there hundreds of scriptures in there that warns the man about the woman? Well, if you're a Bible student, you always know that there's no wickedness like the wickedness of a woman. And you know that the, the Bible constantly warns the man about the woman. That's just a fact. And I would tell every man out there, you believe what that book says, you will fare well. Now, since we live in a world that is so promiscuous, and we live in a world... Um, to where when I talk to these young people out there, when they come out of high school, you should hear some of the stories that I hear of what's going on in these neighborhoods. And that's because of TV, social media, and everything else. Um, I would not ever let my teenage daughter or teenage son have a cell phone. I just wouldn't do it. I didn't grow up with one. They don't need one. Well, Pastor Dobbs, modern time is none of your damn business. It ain't your house. That's what I would tell them. I would never do that. With these uh, out there selling... Um, um, I, I would never do it. And, I mean, I've heard some stories about them having trains in the public school bathrooms, um, about them um, making circles and stuff while two of them get it on and they have their so-called privacy and can I just, it's just some, I'm going to keep it like that right now. I can, it, it's just sad what's going on out here today. And nobody seems to want to guard the flower. The woman today doesn't want to guard the flower because chances are, uh, their mother has either ran off a man or or she tried to beat a man and ran off the man or the man just simply had to go because he simply wasn't going to have no woman ruling over him. A man is born with the inherent nature knowing that he is the head and he is the ruler. But this society is trying to do everything it can to corrupt the man to make sure that, that he becomes infeminine, to make sure that he becomes submissive and subordinate to the woman and all that is broke. If you go read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, you could tell that this broke. You read Ephesians chapter 5, you could tell that this broke. The book teaches that the woman is there and designed to reverence her husband the same way that she would do the Lord. That's what the book says. But you never read about that in churches. You'll never read about that. Uh, you'll never even hear that talked about in churches today. So basically what we have, we have a religious society uh, that has went about to establish their own doctrines, their own teachings, and their own rights, and they're not going into the kingdom, and neither are the preachers or teachers that set up in front of them are. That's why I keep trying to tell y'all that Christianity is a farce. Uh, the Most High did not, did not write the whole entire Bible and the scriptures to give us Christianity. There's no religion called Christianity that's ever even spoken about in the Bible. It's all Israel. So anyway, I teach and I tell young men, and young men, I need for y'all to listen to me and listen to me real good. The book teaches us in Ecclesiasticus, chapter 25, I believe it is, verse 26. It's somewhere along in there. Check it out in that area. It teaches us that if you have a woman that would not go as you would have her to go, then you give her a bill of divorce and you put it in her hand. That's what you do and get rid of her because she's not worthy to be there. Because see, in this ministry, in this ministry, it is literally preached and taught and charged from the rooftop that the man is the head of his house. Not only is the head of his house, he's the provider. Not only is he the provider, uh, but he's the protector. And he is the one that is the sole authority in the home. And the woman is there to submit to that man and be cooperative and agreeable with that man and to help him accomplish his mission. Be it one woman, two woman, three woman, four woman, five woman, six woman, Regardless, and you have to understand, if you're going to function in a biblical society, it's not the same as a declining, debaucherous world society out of which none of these people out here have any right whatsoever at all to point a finger and try to judge you 
against their own book of the law and try to put their book and their thoughts and their sentiments above what the scripture says. So a woman is not there to sit there and tell the man what to do, how to do it, where we're going to do it, the way we're going to do it. She is there to support his mission. She is there to help the man build his kingdom. Um, now, unlike I got this one bald headed, um, uh, old snagger to false teeth wearing black woman prophet, so-called prophetess out there that's claiming that my kingdom is coming down. And of course I say, isn't that amazing? I don't have a kingdom. I'm in captivity here in America. Don't have a kingdom. Um, and another thing is, is simply amazing about this. She must be envious and jealous. Because you could tell there's no way in hell a man will be married to that damn thing. That's is a it. There's a dysfunctional, rebellious, uh, envious, bitter it. It's just what it is. Lonely is probably going to probably sit at home with a cat and dog, calling herself a prophetess. Now I bring it up because the arrogance and the audacity, the unmitigated gall. You won't believe how many people I've had. Over the years, and it said, your kingdom coming down, pastor, now you coming down. They've even prophesied death on me, and every single one of them had come back. If they haven't died um, like Rap the News did, if they didn't die shortly after they made that false prophecy, um, they, they um, actually contacted us and apologized for what they said and said that they were flat out wrong. Flat out wrong. That's going to happen because you get people to get this Jerusalem religious spirit on them. They believe that they're wrong. But if you want to know how your family's going to run successful is, man, you've got to take the head. You cannot take into account a woman's feelings nor her emotions. That's like me. I'm, I'm after all intense purpose considering this world a successful man. So I'm not going to have any woman that I have in my house damn so tell me what to do, how to do it. When I've been the lead and guide not only of this ministry, uh, but my own household, and I've been doing this a long, long time. I'm not having no woman set up and try to dictate and mandate to me the way things that she thinks it ought to be done. Because if I do that, number one, I'll give my strength over to a woman. And then number two, I'm no longer the head of my house. And then number three, Satan has just now entered in and took sole authority of that home. Out of which, if he's taking authority of that home, if I start submitting to what the woman says and yielding to what the woman says, then the next thing you know, Satan is in control of the ministry. And we can't have that. We can't have that. I have to stay strong for my own self and my own salvation. And I have to stay strong for the men that are in the ministry that are watching me, listening to me, and following me as I follow Messiah. Now, what's unique about Straightway is it is so beautiful. It is just so beautiful. While you got a lot of these loud mouth, clackling, envious, bitterest, jealous, jealous, rebellious, Jezebelic, presumptuous women out here who are murmuring and complaining about, I'm women right here. Like, follow me, I gave you the scene of where I was at somewhere in an undisclosed location in Florida. All right, I'm sitting up there looking at all these houses. You can take three steps, no more than four steps, and you right next to a home. And all of these homes in this compound are all designed the same. Every single one of them is designed the same. And people live in things like this, they call it a neighborhood, I call it a compound. Because the homes are just alike. They're, they have literally no privacy. And what you see right here, that's the backyard from the, from. I could take 10 steps from the end of the building to the backyard. And that's it. That's all they consist of. And the majority of this backyard is this pool right here. It's amazing. And and I sit there and look and, and I'm like, man, these people call this liberty and freedom. And what the hell? No wonder the Most High commanded us not only to come out of her and my people. But to come out from among them, can you imagine the thoughts and the sentiments that goes on in this little neighborhood right here? Can you imagine? And they call this, uh, uh, they, call, they like to call it a community, but it's really a compound. Now, contrast that with straightway. We have built our own homes, according to the prophet Jeremiah and Isaiah, and, and what the prophet says, uh, Moses uh, says over in the Torah, and what the, the apostles talked about over in the Acts of the Apostles. We have literally built our own homes in our own hand. Each one of these people are paying a mortgage out here. We don't pay no mortgages in, her, in, in our ministry. We don't. We have, I figured this thing out a long, long time ago, uh, how to keep our people, how to get free, keep our people free, and to raise and rear uh, functional biblical homes. And I can tell you right now, it's amazing. So you, uh, we're going through the airport, right? And you see all these different types of, sometimes I don't even know what the hell I'm looking at nowadays. I can't even figure it out. 
but but for the most part, if you're looking at the female anatomy, everybody is trying to put on display the little flesh that they have. But you know what I see more than anything? Anytime I am with one of my Isha's, I sit up there and watch these people in the, in the airport just turn their head. I watch them get compliments over and over and over again, either on their head covering or their dress. Constant compliments. Not that the people who actually give them the compliments are going to submit to it and actually do it themselves. They're not going to do it, but they get constant compliments no matter where they go about their beauty. And they're all beautiful, every single one of them. And you know what's amazing is that in this ministry, all rebellious women, they're either leaving the man or and divorcing the man or either they're repenting and turning from their wicked way and lining up with the man because we don't tolerate that in this ministry. And our women in this ministry are literally winning. They're having their husband's children. I said it right. The women are having their husband, the wives are having their husband's children. And they are loving life. They're loving the time that they have with their children because they don't have to go out here and hit no nine to five job or any job whatsoever. They don't have to be away from their families. They don't have to put their children in some type of them child care or daycare to where you don't even know if it's a witch or a warlock or a homosexual or a lesbian or anybody that's going to try to have some type of influence on somebody who secretly hates you and they decide to abuse your children who can't even communicate well. Yeah, isn't that amazing? They don't have to worry about none of that stuff. None of that stuff. And they have ultimate security. And we live in a community. Um, I, Tennessee, I have 101 acres of land just in that one spot right there. And our homes, man, they're not all stacked up like sardines of y'all. Like, nah. And we have, and, and this is, I can say, God is so good. Because we have our own assembly. We have our own dining hall. We have our own fellowship hall. We have our own gym, we have our own gardens, we have our own cattle, we have our own poultry. Um, and man, I, and, and it's a, we have our own shop, we have our own mechanic shop, um, we have our own boathouse. Um, we have a couple of nice storage facilities to store lumber and, and material. Um, and we're still building out there and every single thing we own, including to every single blade of grass, out on that community, it's all paid for. We owe no man nothing, just like the Bible says, but love. That's all. We don't have no debt from anyone. We're not borrowing from anyone. We are truly living as the head and not the tail. We have no financial worries. Our women have no financial worries. The children are, are, are provided for. They have their own playground. Uh, they have their own natural spring-fed creek while they don't found a couple of swimming holes and stuff out there. And they fish. Um, we have, man, I, I could just go on and on and on and on and on of what the blessing of the Most High Yahs did with us, all because people are following my direction. The women, um, a man that has his home, uh, it is in order. The women are not in competition with each other. Um, if there were some envy, it got exposed and either somebody had to shape up or ship out or either you shape up or you ship out. Um, nah, I ain't got that right. I'm trying to get this right. Either you had to shape up or you get shipped out because we know in this word right here, according to the word, what the word says, we don't have to put up with a rebellious, stiff necked stubborn, stout hearted, um, schizophrenic woman over here this ministry is a very desirable place for a woman who wants to obey Yah and wants financial security peace and contentment it is now if a woman tries to sit up there and try to tell a man uh what she believes peace is and what she thinks it is and 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 <clears throat> the way he thinks he ought to do things it's gonna be problems <clears throat> it's gonna be some serious problems but we don't ever have to worry about that because our women are so beautiful. All you can do is just watch our sister sisters broadcast every Thursday uh, on this channel. Um, watch some of the things that they do put out. Man, they man, they're winning. Our women are winning, and I've seen women get put away in this ministry simply because they could not change their worldly mindset of trying to rule, manipulate, control, and dominate 
They couldn't do it, gave them plenty of chances, and now they're out there. Fat body cells um, with children that they are raising just as dysfunctional as they are. And it's just it's just a sad, sad thing that they couldn't do it because they could not repent, turn from their wicked ways, and change their mind from his worldly mindset. They just couldn't do it. They just could not do it. For whatever it was, they just could not repent and do it. Um, uh, women, all of them are beautiful. None of them are in competition. And watch this. This is really going to destroy the world and their perception. Most of you women out there have been ran through by more than 20 and 30 men. You know you have. Even if you've been ran through by more than five men, that's five too damn many in a lifetime. But you've got the arrogancy and the audacity and the unmitigated gall to try to speak against a polygynous household, which they don't give a damn what you're saying anyway. If you notice that none of our households don't care what you think <laughs> and neither do they care what you say or believe. They just live in. You got all these opinions, all these vain opinions and all these assumptions and your house is chaos, is tore up. You're unhappy, you're dysfunctional, you're murmuring, you're complaining and all that. That don't happen with us. That don't happen with us. A man knows in this, in this ministry, hey, she can't submit, she can't be cooperative and agreeable, put her away, get her away, give her a bill of divorcement, and, and guess what? The Most High will bring you someone better than her. There's all kinds of women out here. And I told them, they always come to the ministry. There's all kinds of women out here that, that love to be a woman of a humble and meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of the Lord is of great price. They love it. They love being agreeable with their husband. They love accomplishing his mission. And they love having his children. And they love the peace and the serenity that comes along with straight ways communities. They love it. Just love it. It's what they've been looking for. And it's where they have found rest, solstice, and peace. They have found it. And they're not about to give it up for nobody. They're not about to sit up and, and perturb their husband and be in jeopardy of losing what they've already accomplished. I mean, our families, they go on their own little vacations, their own little outings. Um, they go to the beach. They go to the lake. Uh, they ride pontoon boats. They go fishing. Uh, they do. I mean, man, I can go on and on and on what a beautiful lifestyle is. I have the liberty and the freedom to be able to accomplish y'all's work in the ministry. And you know what my vision is? Is I'm continuing to keep on striving to buy more lands. And for those who want to be on community, the day is coming when you will be on community because we're buying more lands, we're building more homes, and we're building properties up, and we're going to continue to keep doing this. And, and we're going to continue to keep doing this until the king comes, Jesus comes. And one day, you, you, and you, and your family, even though it may not even look like it right now, one day you could get the knock on your door, and either a pastor or an elder could come to you and say, would you like to live on a community? Wouldn't that be beautiful? Isn't that amazing in this daytime and hour? So while people want to kick our lifestyle, go ahead and kick all you want. It don't bother us. I have the liberty. I can travel anywhere in this world. I won't preach, teach, minister, visit, um, lay hands on the sick. I can do whatever I want. Whatever I want. Whatever I'm doing is always the will of y'all. But even right now at this stage of my life, I'm still building homes. I am still running from one state to the next, developing communities. I still have the care of the assembly, the care of the church on my mind constantly all of the time. I do. Um, and if I choose personally to add to my home, I guarantee you my home is not going to sit up there and have their own personal opinion and buck up and fight. And, and, and uh, Now, hey, even if I detect that there's some type of malice or ill will, we're going to deal with that. And I personally, and everybody in the ministry can tell you the way I am, I like dealing with stuff in the open. Because I get accused of so many things and so much stuff. I literally like to do stuff in the open because anything that I do personally, I'm not out here running around personally sinning. So I'm not ashamed of anything that I do. And the reason why you deal with it openly because that's the, the hallmark where you get to see the devil in anything, especially if he's trying to hide and you have discerning elders in front of you. It could, whoever it is, 
the whole idea is, is to get rid of the enemy so we can go on and walk in the newness of life. So I thank the Father for what he's done, that I've been able to obey him in this little short period of life that I've had and have such an impact. And I'm planning on be the Father's will, and he continue to have mercy on me uh, to continue on to drive on, strive, and continue to have even more of an impact and to help people get set free, to come out from this world. Because if this world, if this world I here, and the way I see these people in these cities, in the airport, and function, if that's normal, we're going to stay at normal. No, we're coming out of her, my people. We're coming out from among them. We're being separate, just like the command of the Lord is. We're not touching the unclean thing. We damn sure ain't going to be out here uh, with this false religion of Christianity, worshiping uh, 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 on uh, what they call what they call it, worshiping stars and crosses and moons and, and, and um, uh, calling Sunday the Sabbath, which that's a damn lie. You can't even get that from the Bible. Um, and celebrating Easter and Christmas and birthdays. No, we're going to obey y'all. How about that? I can tell you one thing. I've been obeying y'all for a long time, and it's always have bowed for me very well. If the road has been way, the way of the road has been tough. It's been extremely narrow, but it's always worked out in the end. Am I saying that you're always going to have highs and never lows? No, you're going to have both of them. But the book says, He that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. So, you women out there that are, that are working to be a part of a good household, stay meek, stay humble. Um, that Just that alone will get you noticed by a righteous man. And even if you have desire for a righteous man or something like that, you can go to the leaders of your community or whatever it is and just put your request in. He's not going to go blab it to everybody and tell everyone. He's not going to do that. All right? Uh, do that as well. It's still up to you to choose. It's up to the man to choose. Uh, there's free will in this ministry. A woman can say yes. A woman can say no. This ain't like the way it was in a patriarchal day because we don't have homes where the fathers are actually in it. We have people that are, are trying to be fathers to the fatherless in this generation. And so we have to tread very carefully how we do things. Um, but no, man, if you're... If you're in, if you're under some type of authority, trust that authority because it's, it's going to be a covering for you and it's going to bring joy and happiness to you in your life. And you know what? While I finish this video, I'm going to show y'all again what I'm talking about. You know, these people, they think they're living a life. These are compounds. These are literally compounds in this city right here. Watch this. There's a home. There's a home. There's a home. There's a home, there's a home, and there's a home. And all those homes are within, what I just got finished saying to you, all within 30 feet of each other. 30 feet of each other. Hmm? Ain't got enough room out here to grow a bean. <laughs> if you try to plant this, probably the housing authority probably rebuke you and want to kick you out of it even though you bought this home. And this home right here is basically blocks. It's laid out of cinder blocks, and there's stucco on the side of it right here. Now, if I just go to the top of the hill and I go from Brother Brent's house, that's a vehicle I rented right there. If I just go to the top of the hill and I go from Brother Brent's house to the next home that's close to him would be Brother Rich's. It would be like from way over there where that black van is. To where that white and silver car is back there. That's how far their homes are separated from each other. And in between there, there's probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty, one, twenty, two, twenty, three, twenty. At least twenty-four homes that are stacked up right next to each other. And look, watch this. I'm gonna go to the front door of this house right here at the porch, okay? And I'm gonna take some steps to show you how long it takes me to get from one home to the next. Here's the front door, right? Watch this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six steps to get from that door to this house. That's how much room. If you don't believe me, look. Look at this. Six man steps between houses. That is insane. And people can live like this all their lives. 
and never even understand what it means to, to grow your own food, to raise your own cattle, to cut a real yard. <laughs> and like I said, look, here's the front yard to this home that we're staying in, this Airbnb. Look, here's the front yard. The front yard to the sidewalk is one, two, three, four, five, six. So the same amount that you see that's in between this 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 sidewalk and this sidewalk, the sidewalk to the house, sidewalk up here, is the same distance it is between that home and that home. Amazing, isn't it? Now, for the most part, it's a quiet neighborhood, but there is no way in hell that I would be out here living next to all these heathens out here that don't keep the commandments, laws, and statutes. No way in hell. I could not live like this. I would not live like this. I guess that's the reason why the most high y'all put it in my heart and mind to learn how to build homes. Mm -hmm. And I've taught other Israelites how to build homes too. Um, I'm going to tell you like it is. The blessing of the most high is rich and it doesn't add any sorrow. I hope I said something to stimulate thought. Get your heart and mind. Get yourself in order. Let's see. Look how they're doing this roof. That's how they did that roof. This home was built pretty simple. Well, not much they charge for it.